the correct understanding of the two truths. Question. What are the names of the two truths? Answer. First, the mundane truth, and second, the real truth. Question. What is the meaning of the mundane and real truths? Answer. If one discusses the meaning succinctly, one can say merely that the crux of the nature of reality is the real truth, and the twelvefold conditioned co-arising of ignorance is the mundane truth. If the meaning is discussed extensively, there are seven categories of the two truths. Each of these categories of two truths also has three categories, so altogether there are twenty-one interpretations of the two truths. If one utilizes the first category of the two truths, one can destroy all mistaken sayings and exhaust all attachments, as the fire at the end of an era burns up everything and does not leave even a mustard seed behind. How much more so are the effective results of expanding on the later interpretations of the two truths which go beyond the limits of language and are not within the capacity of human feelings to fathom? Question. Why do you identify the nature of reality and ignorance with the real and mundane truths? Answer. The single nature of reality is contrasted with ignorance. Ignorance is delusion, which is the beginning of the real truth, before the aspiration for enlightenment. The real truth is not unrelated to the mundane truth. Therefore, it is called the mundane truth. The nature of reality as a whole connotes ignorance. From beginningless time, when was it, the nature of reality, not real? Therefore it is called the real truth. Question. If so, do you mean to establish the two truths with regard to one dharma? You should establish the two truths in terms of two dharmas. Answer. There are two truths with regard to only one dharma. The mundane truth refers to the hundred realms and thousand suchnesses and the real truth refers to their mutual integration in one thought. Question. The meaning of the nature of reality and ignorance as one type of the two truths is sufficient. Why do you establish seven categories of two truths? Answer. The people's minds are crude and shallow. They do not realize this profound subtlety. One must blaze the trail and point out its profundity. Question. What are the seven categories? Answer. 1. Real existence is the mundane, and the extinction of this true existence is the real. 2. Illusory existence is the mundane, and identifying this illusory existence as empty is the real. 3. Illusory existence is the mundane, and identifying illusory existence as both empty and non-empty is the real. For illusory existence is the mundane, and the identity of illusory existence with emptiness and non-emptiness, so that all dharmas are included in emptiness and non-emptiness is the real. 5. Illusory existence and the identity of illusory existence with emptiness is all called the mundane, and neither existence nor emptiness is the real. 6. Illusory existence and the identity of illusory existence with emptiness is all called the mundane, and neither existence nor emptiness, so that all dharmas are included in neither existence nor emptiness is the real. 7. Illusory existence and the identity of illusory existence with emptiness is the mundane, and that reality includes existence, includes emptiness, and includes neither existence nor emptiness, is the real. Question. How many different names do these seven categories of the two truths have? Answer. Briefly, they have three kinds of dissimilarity. Question. What are the passages? Answer. In the Fahua Swanyi, the terms are listed as above. The Fahua Swan Yi Shi Chin of Chan Zhan says, quote, In the Mahaparinirvana Sutra it says, 
The five aggregates converge, and these are given names. This is called the worldly truth. The aggregates are understood as having no substantial aggregate or name. There is no second aggregate apart from the aggregates. This is called the truth of supreme meaning. The commentary on the Mahapari Nirvana Sutra by Kwan Ting says, these are the two truths of names and no names. The sutra says, For the existence of dharma's names and reality to have existence is the truth of supreme meaning. For the existences of dharmas and names not to have real existence is called the worldly truth. The commentary says, These are the two truths of reality and non-reality. The sutra says, It is like the fact that the self People, sentient beings, lifespans, knowledge and insight, and so forth, are made up of aggregates, realms, sense organs, and their objects, and thus are like the hair of a tortoise or the horns of a rabbit. This is called the worldly truth. The four noble truths of suffering, the causes of suffering, the extinction of suffering, and the path are the real truth. The commentary says, These are the two truths of being definite and indefinite. The sutra says, There are five types of worldly dharmas, the realm of names, the realm of words, the realm of bonds, the realm of dharmas, and the realm of attachment. This is called the worldly truth. The text of the sutra gives details. The mind that does not have warped views concerning these five dharmas is called the truth of supreme meaning. The commentary says, these are the two truths of the Dharma and non-Dharma. The Sutra says, The destruction that is death by burning is called the worldly truth. That which is not death by burning is called the truth of supreme meaning. The commentary says, These are the two truths of burning and not burning. The Sutra says, The existence of eight kinds of suffering is called the worldly truth. The non-existence of eight kinds of suffering is called the truth of supreme meaning. The commentary says, These are the two truths of suffering and non-suffering. The sutra says, It is like one man being called many names, but he is born from his parents. This is called the worldly truth. For things to arise in the confluence of twelvefold condition co-arising is called the truth of supreme meaning. The commentary says, The Two Truths of Confluence. Question. Why are there seven categories of the two truths? Answer. The Buddha obliquely exposed seven layers with regard to seven capabilities. Question. What are these seven layers? Answer. The Fa Hua Suan Yi Shi Qian says, quote, One, Tripitaka. 2. Shared. 3. Shared, advancing to distinct. 4. Shared, advancing to perfect. 5. Distinct. 6. Distinct, advancing to perfect. And 7. Perfect. Close quote. Question. These have already been explained as the four teachings. Why are they now formed into seven categories? Answer. In order to expand the Buddha's original intention and fulfill the potential of sentient beings based on past deeds. Question. What are the meanings of the shared advancing to distinct, shared advancing to perfect, and distinct advancing to perfect? Answer. If one perfects an insight into reality from within concentration, one advances from the reality of this realm of the triple world to that of the transworldly reality. Question. Why is this so? Answer. Both the Tripitaka teaching and the shared teaching clarify the reality of this realm of the triple world, and both the distinct teaching and the perfect teaching clarify the transworldly reality. Both the shared teaching and the distinct teaching overlap both realities. Therefore, only advancing from the shared to the distinct is clarified. Question. According to this meaning, there is only one advancement. 
Why does the Fawa Swa'i establish three advancements? Answer. The first six kinds of two truths are methods of teaching. The teachings previous to the Lotus Sutra do not go beyond the level of those with tentative capabilities. Therefore, there are two meanings of those in the shared and distinct advancing to the perfect. Question. Why is there no advancement out of the Tripitaka teaching? Answer. The Tripitaka teaching deals only with the realm of the triple world, which is non-integrated. Hinayanists gain their enlightenment. Therefore, advancement to higher levels is not discussed. The remaining six are Mahayana. If one wishes to advance, one can escape from the lower stage to the higher. Therefore, it is called advancement. Question. If there is no advancement for those of the Tripitaka teaching, do they have no encounter with the final revelation of the ultimate truth in the Lotus Sutra? Answer. The meaning of advancement is different from the meaning of encountering. Thus, at the time before encounter with the message of the Lotus Sutra, there is no discussion of advancement to the distinct or perfect teachings. Question. The last five categories of the seven categories of the two truths include the threefold truth. Why are they called two truths? Answer. Though the meaning includes the threefold truth, it is still encompassed within the two truths. Question. What does it mean for the meaning to include the threefold truth? Answer. Illusory existence is the mundane truth. Emptiness is the real truth and innate emptiness is the middle. Question. In what truth are the middle and emptiness included? Answer. If they are included in the mundane truth, this is like the distinct teaching, which is called the two truths of the true included in the mundane. If they are included in the real truth, it is like the distinct and perfect teachings, which enter the shared and are called the two truths of the middle included in the real. The perfect teaching is called the real and mundane truths that are beyond conceptual understanding. If one rigorously realizes the intent of this doctrine, one will not overlook any details in the names and interpretations of the meaning. Question. What is the meaning of the two truths of real existence in the Tripitaka teaching? Answer. That the aggregates senses, sense organs, and their objects, and so forth, are all real dharmas. The multifarious and infinite phenomena produced by these real dharmas are called the mundane truth. The extinction of this mundane reality and attaining an encounter with the real is called the real truth. Question. What is signified by multifarious and infinite phenomena? Answer. This refers to the marks of the world and its inhabitants. Question. What are the texts that are evidence for this interpretation of the two truths? Answer. The Panchavim Sati Saha Shrika Prajnaparamita Sutra says, quote, Emptiness is visible form, and visible form is emptiness. Close quote. Question. What is the meaning of this sutra text? Answer. It is through the extinction of the mundane that one says that visible form is empty. Since visible form is not really extinguished, emptiness is visible form. Question. If so, why does it say in the Fahua Shuan Yi Shi Chien that, quote, for this interpretation of the two truths, visible form has real existence and is said to be unextinguishable, close quote. Though it cannot be extinguished, it is said that visible form is empty because of its transiency. Answer. The mundane is merely visible form. It is said that emptiness is visible form because of the analysis of the extinction of visible form as lacking in substantial being. The meaning of saying, though it cannot be extinguished because of its transiency, is as follows. It is said that Visible form is emptiness because, even though it is said to be transient, visible form is not extinguishable. Question. 
Does this interpretation of the two truths include the three meanings of teaching according to feelings, according to feelings and wisdom, and according to wisdom? Answer, these are included. The other two truths are like this. Question, what is the meaning of teaching according to feelings and wisdom, and so forth? Answer, according to feelings, refers to giving various explanations of the teachings according to the capacity of the listener. According to wisdom refers to explaining reality as it corresponds to people. According to feelings and wisdom refers to the two meanings as relative. All should be taught and determined in this way so that there is no confusion. Question. What is the meaning of the two truths of illusory existence and the illusions as empty? Answer. Illusory existence refers to the mundane truth. Illusory existence cannot be realized since it is empty and lacks substantial being. Therefore, this is the real truth. Question. Does this interpretation of the two truths have the same meaning as the previous one? Answer. It is in opposition to the previous one. The reason is that for the first interpretation, when there is real existence, there is no real truth, and when existence is extinguished, there is no mundane truth. Thus, the meaning of the two truths as one integrated reality is not established. The two truths of illusory existence and the illusions as empty are mutually identical. Question. How do you know that the two truths are mutually identical? Answer. In the Panchavim Sati Saha Shrika Prajnaparamita Sutra, it says, quote, Visible form is identical to emptiness, and emptiness is identical to visible form, close quote. Thus, the meaning of the two truths as the mutual identity of emptiness and visible form is established. Question. What is the meaning of the two truths of illusory existence as both empty and not empty? Answer. The mundane truth is not different from the previous interpretation. There are three types of the real truth which are not the same. The one type of mundane truth goes with the three types of the real truth, and thus there are three types of two truths. Question. What are their characteristics? Answer. The Pancha Vimasati Saha Srika Prajna Paramita Sutra explains, quote, Neither with outflows of passion nor without outflows. Close quote. A person of the shared teaching, though he or she may be without outflows and thus not mundane, is not completely lacking in outflows, for he or she has a remainder of attachments. This is one of the categories of the two truths. Next, a person of the distinct teaching who hears, Quote, neither outflows nor no outflows, close quote, denies both extremes and distinctly manifests the reality of the middle, which is the simultaneous denial of both extremes. This reality of the middle is the real truth. This is one of the categories of the two truths. Next, there is the person of the perfect teaching who hears, quote, neither outflows nor no outflows, close quote, and thereupon knows that both negations correctly manifest the middle path, and that the activity of the middle path, reality itself, is great and fast, so that all reality is, quote, neither with outflows nor without outflows, close quote. This is one of the categories of the two truths. Question. Why do some people hear the same thing, yet understand differently and accept varying interpretations? Answer. Both outflows and no outflows is basically a shared doctrine. Both are negated in order to fulfill their karma from the past. Both emptiness and non-emptiness is basically a distinct doctrine. Reality, or all dharmas as it is, is basically a perfect doctrine. Thus, there are three kinds of people who accept differing interpretations of this one dharma of the real truth. Question. Why do these three kinds of people accept differing interpretations? Answer. What they hear is not the same 
because of their varying capabilities and aspirations. Question. Why are there varieties of this interpretation of the two truths? Answer. Since the faculties of the bodhisattvas of the shared teaching are sharp or dull, their arousal of understanding is not the same. Question. What do you mean by saying that they are not the same in sharpness or dullness? Answer. The dull ones are the same as those of the two vehicles. They approach the message of the Lotus Sutra and encounter the possibility of advancement. The clever ones have already adhered to the middle path. So, though they contemplate the mundane truth of illusory existence in the same way, they are different in their grasp of the real truth. Therefore, those of distinct and perfect capabilities arouse and fulfill three distinct possibilities, in contrast to the dull who remain attached to a one-sided view of emptiness. Question. What is the meaning of the three distinct possibilities? Answer. Wisdom that one-sidedly realizes the real truth fulfills the two truths of the shared teaching. Wisdom that realizes the real truth as non-emptiness fulfills the two truths of the shared, advancing to the distinct teaching. Wisdom that realizes the real truth as the non-emptiness of all reality fulfills the two truths of the shared, advancing to the perfect teaching. Question. If the realization of wisdom by these three kinds of people is not the same, is their understanding of the mundane also different? Answer. The understanding of the mundane truth by the three kinds of people is not the same. If a one-sided view of the real is established, then there is also an understanding of mundane reality as illusory. If the real as non-emptiness is established, then the mundane is understood as the Buddha dharmas that are as numerous as the sands of the Ganges. If the real truth as the true aspects of reality is realized, then there is also an understanding of the mundane truth as transworldly and beyond conceptual understanding. Question. Is there evidence for these three who enter wisdom differently? Answer. The Pan Chavim Sati Saha Srika Prajnaparmita Sutra says, quote, there are bodhisattvas who, from their very first aspiration for enlightenment, are in conformance with the wisdom that understands the emptiness of all things. There are bodhisattvas who, from their very first aspiration for enlightenment, enjoy supranormal powers and purify a Buddha land. There are bodhisattvas who, from their very first aspiration for enlightenment, immediately sit on the seat of enlightenment like a Buddha. Question. What is the meaning of the two truths of the distinct teaching? Answer. Illusory existence and non-existence are the mundane truth, and neither existence nor non-existence is the real truth. Question. Why are existence and non-existence the mundane truth, and neither existence nor non-existence the real truth? Answer. The duality of existence and non-existence is the mundane truth, the middle path of the non-duality of neither existence nor non-existence is the real truth. Question. Why is this interpretation of the two truths called that of the distinct teaching? Answer. Those of the two vehicles hear of this interpretation of the real and mundane, but none of them can understand it, and they are as deaf and dumb. Therefore, it is identified with a distinct teaching. Question. Is there evidence for this interpretation of the two truths? Answer. The Mahaparinirvana Sutra says, quote, Maitreya and I both discussed the worldly truth, and when the five hundred Travakas heard it, they said that we expounded on the real truth. What can be said of the transworldly truth of supreme meaning? Close quote. Question. What is the meaning of the two truths of the distinct advancing to the perfect? Answer. The mundane is the same as in the distinct teaching, but the real truth is different. Question. How is the real truth different? Answer. 
Those of the distinct teaching say that only non-emptiness is reality. If one wishes to manifest this reality, it is necessary to utilize the expedient means of conscious practices. Therefore, it is said that all reality is not empty. Those of the perfect teaching hear of reality is not empty, and thereupon completely know all Buddha dharmas without exception. Therefore, it is said that all dharmas are not empty. Question. What is the meaning of the two truths of the perfect teaching? Answer. For all dharmas to be the middle is the real truth. The hundred realms and thousand suchnesses and the fundamental emptiness of the thousand suchnesses is the mundane truth. These are the two truths that are beyond conceptual understanding. Question. Why are these two truths called the two truths that are beyond conceptual understanding? Answer. The real is identical to the mundane, and the mundane is identical to the real, like the Mani Jewel. Question. Why are the two truths of the perfect teaching compared to the Mani Jewel? The real truth is analogous to the Jewel itself, and the mundane truth is analogous to its function. The function is identical to the Jewel, and the Jewel is identical to its function. It is non-dual, yet two. So is the distinction of real and mundane. Question. The idea of mutual identity in this teaching overlaps with the shared teaching. Is there any difference? Answer. That shared teaching refers to mutual identity within this worldly realm. This perfect teaching refers to mutual identity in the transworldly realm. Question. In what sense are they mutually identical? Answer. Identity in this perfect teaching is the graded threefold truth of the distinct teaching as mutually identical. When the graded threefold truth becomes mutually identical, then the meaning of identity in this perfect teaching is fulfilled. Therefore, it is known that the two truths, from those of the distinct teaching to those of the shared and tripitaka teaching, are fundamentally subtle and mutually identical, and it is human feelings and capacities that are different. Question. What is wrong with the threefold truth of the distinct teaching that is not yet mutually identical? Answer. It is the same as an inferior interpretation of emptiness. Question. And how about in accordance with feelings and wisdom, and so forth? Answer. The Lotus Sutra says, quote, the Buddha, in various and sundry conditions, utilizes analogies to expound the Dharma skillfully. His mind is peaceful like the sea. I hear it, and the chains of doubt are severed. Close quote. Question. What is the meaning of this passage? Answer. Various and sundry conditions refers to teaching according to feelings. Thus, it refers to pre-Lotus Sutra teachings. The peaceful mind and severance of doubts refer to the teachings within the Lotus Sutra. Thus, it refers to teaching according to wisdom. If teaching according to feelings and wisdom are in contrast to each other, this is the third teaching. Question. The real and mundane truths as in contrast to each other, should refer to the mundane truth of existence and the real truth of non-existence in the Tripitaka teaching, or to the illusory existence and the emptiness of the illusions in the shared teaching. Why are the real and mundane truths still not the same upon advancing to the distinct teaching? Answer. This can be put into a tetralemma. One, the mundane truth is differentiated and the real truth is one. Two, the real truth is differentiated and the mundane truth is one. Three, the real and mundane truths are differentiated and in contrast. Four, the real and mundane truths are one yet in contrast. Question. How does this tetralemma correspond to the seven categories of the two truths? Answer. In the Tripitaka and Shared Teachings, the real truth is one 
but the mundane truth is differentiated. For the two people, Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas, who enter the shared teaching, the real truth is differentiated and the mundane truth is one. In the distinct teaching, the real and mundane truths are all differentiated and in contrast. For those who advance from the distinct to the perfect teaching, the mundane truth is one, but the real truth is differentiated. In the perfect teaching, the real and mundane truths are not differentiated, yet in contrast. Question. The Fa Hua Suan Yi classifies the first two teachings as both belonging to teaching according to feeling. The Moho Chi Quan, in classifying the three conventionalities, says that only the Tripitaka corresponds to teaching according to feeling, and that the rest are teaching in accordance with reality. These are the teachings of one man, but the two meanings are in disagreement. Answer. There are three distinctions here. First, the Moho Chi Quan refers to the relativity of the Hinayana. Therefore, the Tripitaka teaching alone is said to correspond to teaching according to feelings. The Fa Hua Suan Yi refers to the relativity of the two realities of the tentative and the real. Therefore, the first two, Tripitaka and shared teaching, are both said to correspond to teaching according to feeling. Second, the Moho Chi Quan is concerned throughout with discussing contemplative practice. Therefore, it criticizes only the Tripitaka as teaching according to feelings. The Fa Hua Suan Yi profoundly discusses the intentions of the Lotus Sutra. It is necessary that only the middle path be in accordance with reality. Third, the Moho Chi Quan clarifies the three conventionalities. The three conventionalities are the mundane truth. The two mundane truths in the Tripitaka and Shared Teachings are different in being identical and non-identical. Therefore, the Moho Chi Quan classifies them as different with regard to phenomenal appearance and reality. The Fa Hua Suan Yi classifies the two truths. In both the Tripitaka and Shared Teachings, the two truths are tentative and have not encountered the reality of the middle. Therefore, both correspond to teaching according to feelings. <laughs>